Tech Now. 1-800-823-6313. 1-800-823-6313. You want to be prepared? You watch the Weather Channel. When it comes to something as important as this, knowing that we know can make all the difference. It's all we do. Right now, it's your local forecast on the Weather Channel. historic snows in the city of Chicago, the city tries to get back to normal. I'm Jim Cantori in downtown Chicago. We'll give you a live report on how everybody's doing down here in just a little bit. I'm Mike Seidel in Albany, New York. Sleet and freezing rain are turning some roadways into skating rinks. I'll be back with a live report coming up in just a moment. And I'm Rick Griffin in the Weather Channel Forecast Center. Thanks for joining us for this special edition of Weather Center. Paul Kosen, our winter weather specialist, will be joining me in just a moment. Well, the major winter storm is causing some major problems for travelers in the Northeast and Midwest. These are scenes from Hackensack, New Jersey, where ice is blamed for this multi-car pileup on Interstate 80 earlier this morning. Meanwhile, in Detroit, high winds and more than a foot of snow are making travel impossible in some areas. While the significant snowfall has ended, blowing and drifting snow will cause additional problems today and over Michigan's western counties, lower Michigan's western, western counties, some heavy lake effect snows will be developing as the day unfolds. Now, we have Weather Channel crews in the Northeast and Midwest keeping track of what the system's bringing their way. First of all, in Albany, New York, where there's been sleet and freezing rain, we have the Weather Channel's Mike Seidel. And in Chicago, which has recorded its second biggest snowfall ever, we have Jim Cantori. And that's where we're going to start, in the Windy City. Hello, Jim. Good morning, Rick. I think the fact that this storm was so predictable as much as five to six days out has really helped this. Plus, it was a weekend, a Saturday and Sunday, and that uh, allowed a lot of preparation to take place. Plus, it kept a lot of people that normally would go to work off the street. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, issues of this morning. This is Dearborn Street northbound. You can see we've basically seen uh, a lot of work overnight uh, by the uh, street crews to clear these roads on out. Still some pretty hefty snow piles on the sides, and for those that decided to uh, leave their cars or trucks, as this case may be, no doubt uh, you got some work to do uh, come tomorrow or perhaps even this afternoon. And folks, I'll tell you, if you're getting out and going to start doing some shoveling, and if you're an elderly person, uh, please, please be careful. This is where we have a lot of problems with people having heart attacks, uh, shortness of breath, and whatnot, and you don't want to pass out outside in this cold. It's only 14 degrees with wind chills well below zero. So just take it easy. Uh, you know, pay the kids to do it if you can do that because it's really not a bad time to be out here if you're bundled up. But if you have to shovel all this heavy snow, this 21 inches, it's going to be a problem. And you may even want to wait because it's going to be drifting back over your driveway uh, with the winds picking up this afternoon. We'll keep you posted here from downtown Chicago as the airports try and get back underway. 
Right now, let's go ahead and uh, talk about another spot where the airports are going to go downhill from here, and that's the northeast, where all this weather's moving. Mike Seidel is in the Capital District this morning of Albany, New York, with a live report. Good morning, Mike. And, Jim, this morning in Albany, we've dealt with a little bit of freezing rain, but primarily it's just been sleet so far, which is not nearly as bad as ice. We've seen it kind of whiten up all the uh, surfaces that weren't already covered by snow, and the roads behind me, as you can see, are uh, pretty pretty slippery. There's not a lot of traffic, so that's the saving grace as far as accidents. Let me show you what it looked like a little earlier this morning as the highway crews came out and took a look at the roads and said, let's put down some more salt. They were already basically white from the snow earlier in the week, so they put down more salt. They continue to scrape, especially the elevated surfaces and the major thoroughfares like 787 and the New York State Thruway. But still, if you're doing any traveling into the interior of the Northeast, including the upstate of New York, you need to be advised that you will likely not be able to do the speed limit if you're heading back from a holiday weekend. However, New York, Philadelphia, Washington, temperatures well above freezing, and the temperatures will be above freezing in Boston shortly if they aren't already above freezing in most of the suburbs, and that means just rain and not ice this time around. So some good news on the coast, not so good here as the temperature holds at 12 degrees here in uh, some of the valleys of New York. We'll keep you updated as the roads continue to be very slippery throughout this afternoon. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Mike. And just south of you, uh, there's still a lot of freezing rain, parts of extreme northern New Jersey and southeast New York, well north of New York City, over into western Connecticut. And to tell us more about that is our winter weather specialist, Paul Cosen. Paul, thanks for joining us this morning. While it's still freezing rain over some of those protected interior valleys in the northeast, for the big cities, now, well, outside of Boston and Hartford, cities like New York, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C., it's good news in terms of the ice, although it's going to be windy and wet for the next few hours. Right. As a matter of fact, New York City right now is undergoing very, very heavy rains, strong winds, but their temperatures have risen to about 50 degrees. So look for the heavy rains to continue for the next few hours. Same thing in Philadelphia. Boston's probably in a situation where right at the airport it's just above freezing, but all you have to go is a little bit further inland and temperatures are still well below freezing. That's a sort of a familiar situation in eastern Massachusetts where you get that little bit of a wind shift and west of 128 or west of 495, it can be a completely different weather story. And in this case, we're seeing that with above freezing readings near the coast and icy inland. Well, Paul, what about the interior valleys of upstate New York? Uh, for instance, around the Capital District up towards uh, Syracuse. We know that the cold air is, is very shallow. Is that going to erode away, or is it going to stay below freezing all day long? In some places, it is going to erode away, but probably not completely. For, in, for instance, Glens Fall, which is just north of Albany, is already up to 22 degrees, while Albany is still only in the low to mid-teens. So some of that cold air is beginning to erode, but even when it erodes, most places will still remain... 44,